Welcome back to the Middle Tech Podcast. You got Logan Jones and Evan Knowles recording out of the Sales River Studio. We've got three interesting stories to discuss today. First of which is some more updates coming out of App Harvest. Uh, the next is going to be a story about Meta and Facebook sharing data that ultimately led to a teen and mom pleading guilty uh, to abortion charges. And then we're also going to be talking about Elon Musk's new X AI launch. Uh, so before we get into those stories, we just want to remind everyone to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and follow us on socials at Middle Tech Pod. And before we dive into this discussion, we just want to get a quick word from our sponsors. Before highlighting our sponsors, we'd just like to state that the views and content shared on this platform do not necessarily reflect those of our show sponsors. Middle Tech is presented by KY Innovation, the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development's Office of Entrepreneurship. KY Innovation exists to support and develop Kentucky's startup ecosystem, and we are proud to be supported by an organization whose mission aligns so closely with ours. If you're a founder building in Kentucky, you need to check out the resources that KY Innovation has to offer. You can find more information by clicking the link in our show notes or going to kyinnovation.com. Middle Tech is sponsored by Bolt Marketing. Take your website to the next level with a website that's built to work. At Bolt Marketing, they're revolutionizing websites for small businesses that are affordable, customizable, and hassle-free. Whether you have a construction company, a boutique clothing store, or you own a hot yoga studio, they have options for you. Click the link in our show notes to explore their marketing options that can transform your marketing and grow your business. And as a personal note, Bolt Marketing built our website and they were awesome to work with throughout the entire process. We highly recommend working with them. All right, so for this first story, we want to continue giving some updates on what's been going on at App Harvest lately. Uh, so we're gonna be referencing an article from WDRB. We'll link that in the uh, show notes here. Um, also just wanna stay at the front here that this is not investment advice or anything like that. Uh, but we want to just continue updating what's been going down at App Harvest since uh, really it's it's just not been too great lately. So Evan, I'll let you kick this off and talk through some of what this article discussed. Uh, there's kind of two different things that that got released, uh, I think both today actually. Um, so talk through what's what's been going on lately. Yeah. So CEO Jonathan Webb is stepping down and moving to chief strategy officer. Uh, he's also stepping away from his position as um, chair of the board. And Tony Martin will be taking over. So Tony Martin was a C, was the COO at App Harvest and came from uh, an extensive background in controlled environment agriculture. Uh, and he was brought in to you know run operations, but now is taking uh, lead of the ship. Um, so this is coming after App Harvest has been struggling with uh, cash. You know they're running out of money, um, but also they're losing control of their actual real estate. Um, due to credit and just production abilities. So they're really struggling on that front and they want new leadership, it sounds like, uh, leading the company. Um, so the two references I made to App Harvest um, being at risk with the real estate, um, one is foreclosure action, uh, which they're violating in terms of uh, their creditors. And the other one is a potential eviction by their only customer, but also the owner of their Bria farm. Um, so with the foreclosure stuff, we covered that on a previous episode. They're not not meeting the terms of their creditors on uh, their property in Richmond. Um, but uh, with the Berea farm, uh, they did a sale lease back to uh, Master Nardi, uh, which is their largest distributor who they give all of their produce to, and then they sell it into the grocery stores. Uh, Master Nardi bought that farm. Uh, but what ended up happening is uh, App Harvest is not meeting the production minimum that they had in the lease. And so Bria is claiming that that is the case and uh, is filing a uh, basically a, an eviction. And uh, App Harvest is looking like they might lose the farm. Now they're going to dispute it, but we'll see what happens. Um, so this is pretty unfortunate uh, with, again, a foreclosure and an eviction happening. Uh, really, at this point, they're primarily a real estate company. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but the leadership change, I'm sure Jonathan uh, and the company is, uh, you know, worried about the future, um, and he's stepping down and going to be a strategy officer. So I'm not sure what that entails for him, but uh, it doesn't sound like good news. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we say this anytime we've given updates about App Harvest recently. Uh, we obviously don't like talking about things not going great at App Harvest, um, but you know, at this point, uh, they're just trying to make the right business moves to to get the company, you know, through this through this period of difficulty. We'll see if they can figure out a way through it. Uh, anything else you want to add to any of these stories before moving on to the next one here? No. Cool. Um, so this next story is honestly pretty terrible, um, but it's got a theme in it that we want to discuss on this podcast. 
uh, around the sharing of data by some of these big tech companies because this is a theme that uh, we're seeing play out in a few different ways with these new social media companies emerging, new leadership of the social media companies. Uh, and so this story deals with a teen and her mom uh, pleading guilty to abortion charges based off of uh, Facebook data that was obtained through a search warrant. Uh, so Evan, this was a story that you posted on your story uh, this morning, actually, and you wanted to just discuss this a little bit more in detail. Uh, dive into the details of the story, and let's start having a conversation around you know, the dynamics of big tech giving the government access to your data. Yeah. So I mean, all personal beliefs aside on this story, because it's not uh, it's a sick story. I mean, it's it's gross what happened. But, you know, personal opinions aside, uh, basically what happened here is the government uh, requested access to, uh, again, this teen and her mother's uh, private messages on Facebook Messenger. Uh, and Facebook handed all, all that data over. Um, and so this is really a story about, you know, the government having access to our data, whether it's communication via text, messages on Facebook, TikTok, uh, or it's emails, whatever it might be, they have the right to that data in many cases with companies like Facebook handing it over. Um, and so what ended up happening was uh, this teen had an illegal abortion. Um, she took an illegal abortion pill and then they illegally disp disposed of uh, the fetus in the body. Um, so that was all illegal, but the way that they were ended up uh, having the case against them to the point that they pleaded guilty was again, the government got access to their Facebook data and saw the messages and proof in there that, uh, that all of this happened. Um, and so again, you know, just sick story, but what, what's happening here is, you know, big tech has a ton of data on all of us. I'm sure there are things all of us are saying that we don't want people to know and government has access to it. And we don't know what else these companies are doing with our data is the point of this story. You know, in this case, they're giving it to the government, but in many other cases, they're using it for, you know, many other ways that we probably wouldn't approve. Um, and so really, I think the, the message here is that, you know, we need to start really considering what privacy means uh, here in the United States, because there's not really clear regulation. There's not really a culture around privacy, but I think we really need it, especially as we head into a time where, you know, our personal data and our messages are being scraped to train all of these artificial intelligent uh all these artificial intelligence tools. So um, it's just, you know, a timely story when it comes to artificial intelligence um, and also just privacy. Um, again, all personal beliefs aside, uh, I think that companies need to model Apple uh, in the way that they handle privacy. You know, Apple does not give access to any of your encrypted messages, anything on your phone. Um, if the government wants access to your phone after a crime, even if you are a terrorist that killed, for instance, 14 people in San Bernardino, Apple did not turn your personal data over to the government, even if you're a terrorist. Um, and so I'm a firm believer of you know, privacy um, and that we have the right to it and we should know what we're giving our data, who we're giving our data over to and in what circumstances it's being used. Um, so this is just a, you know, a really, uh, again, sick but interesting story on how you know, the government is using data to uh, incriminate people. Yeah, honestly don't have too many thoughts on this. I, I'm pretty aligned with what you're saying on this story. Uh, I mean, it's it's just kind of like a different dynamic altogether uh, than when the, a lot of these laws were written. You know, we have completely different methods of communicating and collecting the data uh, from those methods of communicating to compile evidence against somebody is, uh, it's something that I feel like has not been completely thought through uh, on, the, on the side of some of these big tech companies. I mean, you see people like Apple uh, helping to lock some of that data down, but a lot of people don't even know what they're agreeing to when they're you know, signing up for a service and accepting the, the yeah. terms of service. And a lot of that is within those terms of service. And again, a lot of this data these days is, is going to be used to train these AIs and these large language models. And we need to make sure that, you know, we're protecting that. Um, you know, many companies uh, are banning chat GPT within the organizations because, again, the privacy is not clear. Um, but, you know, I think now that AI is growing, we need to kind of take a step back and, and first address you know, social media, because we did a really bad job of privacy and controlling data around social media. And I think if we solve that first, then, you know, AI will be a lot easier. Um, and so that's just, you know, I think uh, an order of operations there. Yeah, I mean, I think to some extent, privacy is the currency that we pay for some of these tools with, especially like social media. 
and things like artificial intelligence, you, you sacrifice some of your privacy in order to get free access to some of these tools. Well, I mean, there's privacy on what you publicly put out there on your feed sure. and your I stories and the comments, but, you know, private DMs yeah. is, you know, there's a line to cross there. And, you know, this is, this is one of those situations you got to ask yourself, are you okay with the government getting access to your private messages? Yep. Um, and most people I don't think would be. Um, they might say, oh, well, I don't have anything to hide. That's, that's not an appropriate thing to say. You know, you don't get to say that because that's just not how the world works. Um, but, you know, I think that we all need to consider that, uh, you know, privacy is something we need to take more seriously. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, well, let's move on to this last story here uh, in the AI Edge segment. Uh, so as we do, we like to talk about AI uh, and some tips, tricks, and topics for gaining an edge with artificial intelligence. So uh, for this week's story in the AI, AI Edge segment, uh, it's more just an announcement from Elon Musk. Uh, so Elon has decided that uh, his four or five or six uh, additional companies are not enough. He's now launching an artificial intelligence company as well. Uh, so he formally announced the launch of XAI uh, on Wednesday. And this uh, AI company has the goal of uh, understanding the universe. So as of right now, there's not a ton of information out about it at the time of this recording. Um, there is going to be a Twitter Spaces held at 4 p.m. on Friday, which is tomorrow for us. Uh, so there'll be a lot more information swirling after that Twitter Spaces, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I think my thoughts around this are I'm glad to see another AI company popping up. I think more competition in this in this space is only going to lead to good things. Um, but not knowing much about it, I can't I can't speculate much further than that. My only other thoughts on it are I feel like Elon is just continuing to push, um, you know, personal bandwidth. I don't understand how he can continue to do all of these things. But in terms of what he focuses on, I'd much rather him focus on artificial intelligence companies, uh, SpaceX, Tesla, rather than Twitter. I think I feel like Twitter is kind of draining him. And well, causing this is, it says this is not, this is a separate company from Twitter, but it's it not is. going to be. Well, uh, they yeah, will merge. Twitter will end up using, or I'm sorry, XAI will end up using probably a ton of data from Twitter they will license. They'll probably do an exclusive. They will do a license of that data, and then they will merge. I guarantee it. So, I mean, Twitter is just going to become an AI, an AI company, in my opinion. That's you know, uh, also a traditional social media company. I think that the social media will be a wrapper around the artificial intelligence that he's developing here. Um, and then, you know, one of the reasons that Facebook launched Threads was they needed more text data. Um, you know, I think they were talking about this on the Allen podcast, and it was interesting that you know Facebook has a ton of photos, um, they have a ton of video content, uh, they do have a good amount of text and comments and just captions. But what Twitter has is really you know very uh, conversational uh, and th and you know different type of text data that you know is basically uh, way more valuable than I think you know captions and just plain comments on photos are. Um, it's, it's political dialogue, it's news, it's timely news, um, it's, you know, current events, you know, that if you are able to basically aggregate that text um, is super valuable. And so I think that that is what Elon is doing here is that's one of the reasons he bought Twitter because he knows that, um, you know, he needs that data to train AI uh, and then he launches this company. Yeah. I know we've joked about it before. I feel like we, I feel like Elon just finds a way to stay in the headlines every week, every yeah. single week. There's something going on about Elon. It's kind of getting exhausting, <laughs> um, but we'll continue to talk about Elon because uh, this is going to be one of those stories that everyone's going to want to follow along with. I'm sure they're going to end up doing some interesting stuff one way or another. Uh, they've got a pretty robust team behind this. So they've got people that have worked at Google's DeepMind, Microsoft, Tesla, uh, and University of Toronto. So um, no doubt they're going to accomplish something interesting here. Um, we'll see. Yeah, what's the University be. of Toronto is a big one because that's where the transformer technology from Google was uh, discovered and invented. Um, and so I'm sure he pulled some people from that team that invented the transformer, uh, which is basically the underlying technology shift that allows for these generative AI models uh, to process and, and train on as much data um, as they do. Um, so that's a that's a big yeah. One. That's good context there. So moving on to the tip of the week, uh, this is one that I post about on my Instagram story. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you saw me posting about uh, a new little project that I tried working on with ChatGPT, where I essentially took personality tests and strength finder tests, so things like the Myers Briggs. Um, strength finder is kind of assessment all on its own. Uh, so I exported some PDFs of the results from those tests. 
I use uh, my ChatGPT Plus account to upload those PDFs to ChatGPT. Uh, and then I also uploaded some of my writing about life goals, uh, things I'm struggling with, uh, and gave ChatGPT the context on my personality and my strengths, and essentially just told it to become sort of a life coach, life consultant for me. Uh, and I haven't actually built it out as far as I think it could go yet, but from the initial toying around that I did with it, I think a lot of people would get a lot out of it um, because it was spot on when kind of calling out, hey, here are some potential blind spots to look out for, here are ways to mitigate them. Um, and I think eventually what I would love to see happen with uh, artificial, intelligence, artificial intelligence and ChatGPT in general is to be able to train it on a bunch of uh, data and context around myself and then be able to use it to help me just maximize my output and productivity uh, and you know ideation of, of different things. So that's my tip of the week. Uh, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that, but that was something I enjoyed uh, toying around with with AI. So again, that requires a ChatGPT Plus account, but uh, as I've said in the past, that is some of the most advanced technology that we have access to in today's day and age. So I think it's well worth the $20 a month that you'd pay for it. Other than that, we're going to have uh, Adam Bo of Cake on this week's Spotlight series. Uh, so that was an awesome interview about a new company um, that's being built uh, and started here in Lexington. So be sure to tune into that one. And other than that, we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next week.